Thank you so much for watching this online video tutorial. Like, comment, and share, as well as subscribe to our channel at Good Better Best Online Videos for more video content. Good evening, great tens. Formally, we've greeted each other informally already. Um, topic of tonight of stoichiometry, of course, that we're still busy with, is uh, molar volume. Okay, so we just need to understand something about molar volume. Okay, uh, molar volume is always taken or discussed at STP. Does anybody know what STP stands for? Isn't that standard something pretty sure? <laughs> awesome, awesome. We, yeah, we're halfway there. Okay, standard temperature and pressure. Okay, that's the T. Standard temperature and pressure. Okay, or, or as I like to call it, or liked to call it, standard temperature pressure. I left the and out. Okay, what they're saying here, put a little comma, is that one mole, okay, of any gas, okay, has a volume of 22,4 decimeters cubed. At standard temperature pressure, one mole of any gas has a volume of 22,4 decimeters cubed. Hence why it's given the name molar volume. Okay. Now, also another thing about STP, standard temperature is zero degrees Celsius. Okay. And standard pressure or standard volume pressure is 101,3 kPa which is what obviously uh, pressure is measured in pascals. So KPA is uh, kilopascals, okay? Which is equal to one atmosphere pressure. 101,3 kilopascals is equal to one atmosphere pressure. All right. Now, an example that I'll just uh, verbally uh, give out is that one mole of oxygen has a molar mass of 32 grams per mole. We can find that out on our periodic table. And a volume of 22,4 decimeters cubed at STP. One mole of hydrogen gas has a molar mass of 2 grams per mole. One mole of hydrogen has a molar mass of 2 grams per mole. Why am, I, am I talking nonsense? Yes, of course it would, because hydrogen gas is H2. So it has a molar mass of 2 grams per mole, okay, and a volume also of 22,4 decimeters cubed at STP. So it doesn't matter what the molar mass is, but one mole of any gas, no matter the molar mass, will have the same or occupy the same volume at STP. In other words, we're saying equal volumes of all gases under the same conditions, which is same temperature and same pressure, all contain the same number of particles, which is 6,02 times 10 to the power of, I think it's negative 23. Sorry, 6,02 times 10 to the 23, not negative 23. Sorry, my brain short-circuited there for a second. Okay. Cool. So that's molar... That's molar, mol uh, molar volume, okay? So now, now, the volume of gases that react or are produced in a chemical reaction, they are proportional to the number of moles. So if we take a little uh, example here, um, my little tag at the bottom is missing because I had to recreate the document. I'm going to still add it back in. Um, we take a little bit of an example here of a reaction. Let's say we've got nitrogen gas plus um, hydrogen gas and we got ammonia now ammonia gas okay uh, obviously these are going to have balancing numbers now so we obviously need to put a two in front here to balance the nitrogens and put a three in front here to balance the hydrogens so it looks like we've got one mole we've got three moles here and we've got two moles there let's add mole here So this is the mole ratio, all right? So it looks like we've got one volume, which will be 22,4 decimeters cubed. Here we've got 
three volumes, which means we got 67,2 decimeters cubed. And here we got two volumes, so we've got about 44,8 decimeters cubed here. Okay, so the volume of the gases that react or are produced in a chemical reaction are proportional to the number of moles. So we can find the proportion using some algebra arithmetic. Okay, the two ways of doing this. The first one is, of course, the product of the terms on the outside equals the product of the terms on the inside. Okay, or you can follow the dotted line. Okay, so if we've got, for example, here we had a mole ratio um, of, in fact, this it's actually just used a, let's actually use a uh, proper example instead of explaining all that nonsense. So let's say we've got oxygen gas, and we're concerned with finding out the volume, okay? Rough example, that will react completely with a volume of sulfur dioxide gas, that's equal to, 500 cubic centimeters cubed, which is obviously 0 0,5 decimeters cubed, okay, at STP. And it's given by the reaction 2SO2 gas plus oxygen gas 2SO3 gas, okay. So we've already done our conversion there, right? So if you look at the mole ratio here in another color, we could just state it here for our marker or examiner mole ratio. We've got, um, we'll just get rid of that. Two is to one is to two. And we want what's the volume of oxygen. And we have already the volume of sulfur dioxide. Okay. So the decimeters cubed that is given okay this is a method to working it out okay so let me put this as a heading here this is the method okay we are given 0 0.5 decimeters cubed is to an unknown that i'm going to give a value of x and this one is it's not it's not required for this um, calculation okay so now we can cross multiply okay so in other words in order to find that out, the 1 is going to multiply by the 0, 0,5, and the 2 is going to multiply by x. Okay? So we end up with 2x is equal to 1 times 0, 0,5, which is 0, 0,5. So if we must divide both sides by 2, bring in a different color into the playbook, okay, they will cancel. Therefore, x, which we can clearly see is the decimeters cube or volume of oxygen, is going to equal to 0, 0,25 decimeters cubed of oxygen gas. So I didn't write out the question, but... We were trying to find out the volume of oxygen that will react with 500 cubic centimeters or 0 0,5 decimeters of sulfur dioxide here. What was important is that we needed, and this is all at STP t standard temperature and pressure. What we needed to do was we first needed to recognize the mole ratio, which is 2 is to 1 is to 2. We don't need the products. We're working all with the reactants right now. We were given the volume of sulfur dioxide, SO2, as 0 0.5 in the mole ratio of 2. And oxygen was in the mole ratio of 1, but its volume was not given specified. We had to go and work it out. We worked it out using the cross-multiplying um, method to find x. So in other words, if this was A and... Um, this was B, and this was C, and this was D. 2 would multiply by D, and um, B would multiply by C. So in other words, we multiplied 1 by 0, 0,5 to get 0, 0,5, and 2 times x, obviously 2x, divide both sides by 2. We find that 
basically half of 500, which is 250 cubic centimeters, or 0.25 decimeters, will react completely with 0.5 decimeters in the reaction, okay, to be completely uh, used up. Okay, we did, we were not required to find out the um, we were not required to find out the volume of SO3, but we can use the same thing. Right, the last topic of stoichiometry that we need to go to is theoretical yield. Now, just to define theoretical yield, it is the amount of products that are, and the key word here is are, are formed in a chemical reaction In a chemical reaction when all keyword here again all reactants react in other words there's none wasted um, and the entire keyword here again entire reaction is complete that's theoretical yield. Okay. Before performing chemical reactions, help us, it's helpful to know. Oh, I said helpless instead of helpful. Sorry. Before we conduct or perform a chemical reaction, it is helpful to know how much product has the potential to be produced with given quantities of reactants. Okay. Typical chemical reactions do not have a hundred percent yield. In other words, not all of the reactants actually react 100% to produce a 100% product or product that's 100%, okay? Which means that reactants are not all converted to products. The percentage of reactants that are converted to products in a chemical reaction, that is referred to as percentage yield. Is definitely down on the board there. Now, to find the percentage yield, we actually measure the amount of product formed after the chemical reaction is complete all right and then we compare actual yield to the theoretical yield and determine the percentage so we're actually come we actually uh, formulate sorry a formula that says uh, percentage yield so it's often written like just with a percentage sign so percentage yield is equal to um, actual over theoretical we leave out other stuff like yield and stuff because we know exactly what we're talking about actual over theoretical and of course you have to times 100 to get it in a percent okay so actual mean we actually mean here in grams so we take the actual the actual physical masses okay in grams okay so let's leave this up here for a bit and then we'll have a look at a little worked example so percentage yield here in this example, um, a little bit of example. Let's say, for example, we was we um, only got in a certain type of copper reaction two comma seven six grams of copper. All right. But in theory, according to mathematics, when we had mole ratios and everything like that, let's say the person calculated that they were only going that they should have gotten three comma fifteen grams of copper. But only 2,76 was actually found or measured to have been produced. So what we do is we take the formula percentage yield is equal to actual divided by theoretical yield times by 100. Once we do that, we'll find, plug in the numbers, we find that only 87,62% of copper was actually produced. Okay? It was actually produced. So only 87 comma six two because three comma one five grams was the total one hundred percent, but only two comma seven six grams out of that was produced. So therefore, it's safe to to say that the reaction was only eighty seven comma six two percent successful for copper, and that's how it works. Ladies and gentlemen, grade tens, that wraps up my session for this evening. Uh, thank you so much for joining me on the last and final session for stoichiometry. Okay, this is where we're going to call it a, a section, because I can't say call it a night or call it a day or whatever. We're going to call it a section. 
and this will be the final thing for grade 10 on stoichiometry all right what we will do or aim to do is practice a little bit of exam questions to wrap it off the session or the section sorry 100 percent to cap it off let's just have a look at some exam questions uh, the exam questions also be like a bit of a revision as well and then we'll also go back to revisit some topics that we have touched on this year to make sure that we are fine for uh, upcoming tests and also just to iron out any kinks all right don't forget to like and comment on this video as well as subscribe to our channel good better best tuition uh, online videos